Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in from your corner of the world. So happy you're here with us and sharing a piece of your, your morning, your afternoon, your evening, and definitely a few late nights. That's awesome. We're so appreciative uh, for the interest that you uh, shared by attending our group session that Timothy, Timothy and I are doing. And we will do our best to make this event as valuable and as insightful as possible for you. So a quick rundown of what to expect from us. Uh, we'll start by introducing ourselves, because you may be wondering, who the heck are these people? Uh, we'll both share our top five portfolio tips, uh, which will take about 10 minutes max, because then we'll transition into the key part of this event, which are the live portfolio reviews. So after our short presentation, uh, we'll then take a look at the chat. I'll prompt you all uh, and then take turns picking a portfolio to review live, share our honest feedback and advice, and just like learn from each other. So, and then a heads up, you may have seen this, uh, this event is being recorded. We may decide to upload this on YouTube or just like share it out later. So FYI. All right, let me share my screen. Okay, I'll do intro first. So hello everybody, my name is Ying Yao. I am a senior UX designer at Honeywell. I'm also co-organizer of Ladies That UX Atlanta, and of course, a design mentor at ADP List. So I've been uh, a mentor on the platform since late last year. So I've had a lot of opportunities to meet, mentor, and learn from a lot of people from around the world. Uh, let's see, I think we're also doing fun facts. So my fun fact uh, is that uh, I was a radio DJ for four years. So during that time, I played a lot of morning jazz, played a lot of uh, Miyazaki movie film scores, whatever I wanted. So that was a great time in my life. All right, Timothy. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Tim, and I am a product designer at The Score. And I primarily work within um, app ecosystems as well as payments um, in sports media and sports gaming. And I've been mentoring with ADP List for about, I would say, five months or so. And then before that, I was doing a lot of um, in, kind of like in-person mentoring uh, locally here in Toronto as well uh, before COVID. So it's been really great getting to meet a lot of people around the world, trying uh, looking at getting into product design and UX design. And um, and a fun fact about me, um, I played violin for about nine years in school, even though I can't really play anymore. You did and too? One fit one failed year in uh, jazz piano. Um, so yeah, don't ever ask me about like, ask me about jazz piano tips because I would be the worst individual for that. Uh, and then I also do a lot of uh, running and like at different races around Toronto, um, ran the Chicago Marathon a couple of years ago and looking to, to get getting back into it uh, once uh, all the different races are back up and running. And uh, yeah, that's uh, a little bit about me. Awesome. Like we're both, uh, it's funny that we both play violins. We're both fork dorks as we, uh, as my group used to mm -hmm. call ourselves. All right, let's mm -hmm. get off. Uh, Timothy's going to share his top five portfolio tips and then I will. So first one. <laughs> Join your head. Cool. So uh, when it comes to your portfolio, uh, one of the key things is basically understanding what your ideal employer wants to see. So if you are looking at, uh, say, getting into an agency, for example, um, it may be important to show the breadth of work uh, that you've done in different industries, uh, different product areas and different industries. If you're looking to get into, say, like a mid-sized product company, it might be good to show uh, your end-to-end -end skills and your experience with iterating on a product over like a long period of time. And then um, a small startup would be like, how quickly can you execute on a small idea with like a limited um, amount of time. So uh, do your research to understand like what are the different employers looking for so that you can better match um, your work to um, what they're looking for. And the second one is the type of content versus the level you're at in your career. So if you're starting out, very often um, your role on a day-to-day -day in a full-time position might be you're working, you're supporting another designer to execute on the feature. So um, a, a hiring manager would might wanna know um, how you would work if you were given like a visual design challenge within like a limited amount of time and how understand how you work with uh, engineering and product managers to make sure that gets executed and shipped. 
but as you gain more experience, um, you might be showing a full, a larger uh, piece of uh, project that you've either shipped, or you can also communicate, say for example, any process improvements that you helped internally, whether if it's uh, say building a Figma plugin so that your fellow designers can uh, work more efficiently, or if you uh, establish some sort of process to uh, to better help um, your team contribute to design system updates, for example. So how do you go beyond the scope of your regular work to um, to help the uh, the company and the team as a whole? And the third is writing in an engaging manner. So um, telling your ideas and your solutions is part of what it takes to be a designer. So um, how do you communicate um, your case studies? Instead of saying like, if you are creating an app for um, hikers to find a hiking path, um, instead of saying, saying it really cut and dry that way, it, can you frame it as like, um, helping adventurers discover off the beaten paths when it comes to hiking. So how do you frame um, your work in a really engaging way uh, for people to be really invested in what you do? And next one is document as much as you can regularly. So this is something that I fail to do as well regularly, but it's something I was like, had the good intentions of doing. Um, so instead of waiting between like a year or two years to kind of like collect all your work and to update your portfolio, make it a habit to do it like maybe once a month or once every couple of weeks and grab like little pieces of things, uh, items that you're working on along the way so that when the time comes, you're not overwhelmed with the amount of work that you need to do to uh, make an update to your portfolio. And this also helps you as a writer uh, in a way that um, it helps you explain the work that you do and it gives you more practice regularly. And the next one, or the last one, yeah. is uh, communicating your business thinking in, in addition to your user thinking. So product design very often is striking a fine balance between helping your users solve their problems and achieving their goals, as well as accomplishing the goals for the company uh, that you're with. So communicate to a recruiter how you can uh, juggle both sides uh, when it comes to tackling um, tackling a product. And then even if you don't have that full-time experience yet, um, at least uh, make a good assumption of what you think like a business goal would be for whatever uh, concept project that you're doing. So at least it lets uh, others know that, hey, you did take the business side into consideration in addition to the user thinking side. And uh, that's the five tips for me. Awesome, great job, Teddy. All right, my turn. So number one, open with a concise and unique headline. So as they say, first impressions matter. So you gonna make sure you start strong with a very concise, unique, strong headline. So what can help with this is practice your you know, professional introduction with friends and acquaintances, and then see what kind of follow-up questions that they ask. So those will be hints on like, what are some of the unique details that you can express in your headline um, to make you stand out? Number two, write an executive summary at the top of the case study. So you may see this as like overview or summary. So put yourself in the, in, the, in the shoes of like a recruiter that has to look at like 30 or 40 portfolios, right? That you wanna make sure that you organize your case study very concisely and succinctly so that if they don't have time to go read through everything, that you still give them like a, a highlights view of what are the key points of your case study. And an example of this outside of design is that when you see in, a, in news article websites, uh, some of them don't, they have the full article, but they now have bullet points at the top that kind of give you like, these are the key things that you need to know. So practice summarizing your case study so that uh, if they never like scroll past and read through the full, the full uh, length of your case study that they can still come away with key takeaways about it. Number three, be intentional and clear about every artifact that you include in your case study. So first you wanna define what your core objective is in your portfolio and is your core objective is for your portfolio and what is it in service of? So it may be your, your first uh, UX job, you're transitioning from maybe a, a contributor to a manager, 
Maybe you want to uh, open up some speaking opportunities or other type of professional engagements, right? So that's your core objective. Hold on to that and then look at every single artifact in your portfolio and ask yourself, does this serve my core objective? Is it clear? Will the audience have any difficulty understanding it? So for example, it's like I've, I've seen portfolios where, where images are like tiny or like there's not an ability to enlarge it. So it makes it difficult for me to understand their case study overall. It affects my assessment of their work. So look at every aspect uh, critically and then make sure that it's presented clearly for the audience to look at. And again, you can practice uh, looking at other portfolios with that critical eye. So, you know, again, pretend you're a recruiter, you only, you, and you have like 20 or 30 portfolios, you have uh, only a few minutes to, to spend on each. So when you go through that in that type of like time constraint, what sticks out to you? And then that might give you some hints on like how you can refine your case study in that way too. Number four, prioritize your to-dos in an impact and effort matrix. So you probably have a long list of to-dos or improvements or updates that you wanna make on your portfolio, but you have to be able to prioritize it or else you're just, you're just gonna spend forever tweaking it and not putting it out there for people to see. So you wanna take that list and you wanna rank it based on effort first, right? Some of the to-dos or updates are gonna take less effort than others. So like uploading uh, clear images it's going to take less effort than like overhauling your entire case study, right? So you should have a clear uh, priority list. And then you want to rank that same list along a new axis that's based on impact, as in like impact or impression on the audience. So some of the updates or to-dos that you do is going to have a bigger impact on the, on the audience than others. So uh, a very clear or strong, concise headline, you know, that first impression is going to make a bigger impact than you tweaking the professional links on your like footer bar, right? So when you look at that, you will now have a prioritized list of what to tackle first. So you wanna be able to then tackle the to-dos that are low effort, but high impact, get those out of the way. And then you kind of go from there. So that should help you prioritize what to focus on to like improve your overall uh, portfolio. And then number five, create a career management document or a hype doc. I'm going to put a link to these two references in the chat. Hope that went through. Awesome, yeah. So uh, I can't see you, but show of hands of who has sat down to create a case study, but from the past, from like three or six or maybe a year ago, and you have trouble remembering the details. And then you kind of start to panic a bit, right? I definitely have. I'm like, I, don't, I forgot the details. I kind of overall understand what I did but I don't have like each step, right? So this is essentially your record of challenges, achievements, highlights that you've experienced that you want, and then you wanna regularly document this somewhere that you can always refer back to, to create your next case study or update your portfolio. Cause those insights, when you write it down, they're fresh in your mind, right? You know exactly what was the environment it was in, what were the constraints you went through, the feelings that you had, um, that's kind of, that's a lot. That's really hard to remember six months from now, but those are kind of like the key, like rich and detailed context that really help your case study stand apart. So this is helpful for case studies, for resumes, even in interviews, right? You're not just, uh, you're not just uh, communicating your actions in a case study. You're, you're including the, the context around it, your feelings, your rationale. Why did you make this step, right? That's really helpful for the audience, for the recruiter, for the hiring manager to read. Ying, were you using a, were you trying out Polywork for that as well? Or was that a little bit more limited as to what you could do? Yeah, so there's like a new, really cool kind of like uh, professional social network called Polywork. You can Google it afterwards, but it's like kind of like a career timeline of all of your career insights. So that's also another cool thing to, to check out. Well, I think there was a comment about the page not found on the David one. Oh, no. Oh, so I think Cece put in a fresh link. Oh, uh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. All right. Let's jump okay. in. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So, guys, now's the time. If you want your portfolio reviewed, you want to drop a link. Timothy's going to select from it. Then we're going to review it together, share our feedback, our general advice. And then we're just going to take turns doing that for the rest of this uh, event. Yep. So I think we're, one, aiming, step we're aiming for maybe four individuals or so um, until about eight o'clock. So I'm just going to
grab. Oh, wait, I'm gonna share my screen. Yes. Yeah, we we try to go through as many as we can, but also enough time to give you some detailed advice. And then I see mm -hmm. a question from Heather. What was the the site's called? Polywork. Polywork.com. There you go. Thanks, mm -hmm. Monona. Okay, so uh, just jumping back into the chat. I'm gonna grab just the set of the one I see it's uh, my, I think. Okay, so can everybody see my screen? Yep. Cool. Okay, so we've got uh, my here, who is a UX designer for web, mobile, and video games. Interesting. <laughs> As a wannabe gamer. I am uh, very interested in some uh, projects like this. Oh, wait, wait, um, wait, 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 Timothy. I don't think you're sharing your screen. Oh, oh, wait, sorry. It opened on a different, um, different window. There you go. You got it. Okay. All right. There, there we go. Okay. So uh, I'm my UX designer for web, mobile, and video games. And just by kind of like initial impression, um, because video games is a little bit more unique when it comes to uh, UX design and product design. Uh, instantly, like this is something that really stands out to me. Uh, I would lo also love to see like um, uh, maybe like are there certain games that you've worked on that uh, people may recognize that you can point out as part of your headline. I think that can add a little bit more additional uh, ways for someone to remember uh, you by. Um, Okay, so I'll just go through uh, the rest of this homepage. So we got game projects. We, so it's a Borderlands 3 storage menu. And it shows that it's a theoretical or concept project. I think um, it would be good to make that a little bit more um, evident to a reader so that as they are kind of scrolling through the different projects, you, they can quickly um, pick out like, oh, hey, this is something that is shipped. This is something that is uh, conceptual. Um, okay, so this is, these are game projects. And then we got the um, web and mobile as well. So we've got an iOS app here. Um, what I, um, yeah. I really like that there's like a clear header here a short description mm -hmm. as well as those relevant tags, because if you have like multiple case studies and like maybe you only have time to look at one, it's helpful to say like, hey, this one includes user research, but this this other mm -hmm. project includes prototyping. So that helps the audience kind of filter like filter on like, I'm looking for someone with this particular experience. And then for you to like clearly label it will help them choose uh, which is the proper case study for them to like spend time looking in. Mm -hmm. And to add to that, um, if you have a good idea of like if one case study is a little bit longer and other is a little bit shorter, maybe you can communicate like uh, the length of, of the case study. So if one's like a 10 minute read, one's a five minute read, that will be really good for um, employers who may only have like a short period of time to look at your portfolio and they can more easily pick out what's uh, the best use of their time. Um, okay. So I will uh, go into, let's say, let's try this one out. Um, Vinylist, I believe. Ooh, yes, Whoa. table of contents, <laughs> anchor links. Yeah, I actually really yes. like the uh, table of contents you, um, you have here on the side. So um, really great job on that. And okay, so kind of go through this. A theoretical iOS app that helps users scan vinyl album barcodes covers and inner labels to find albums. So in a, a little bit, um, I guess it's like Shazam, but you actually um, like scanning the actual albums instead of like recording the audio or capturing the audio. Uh, cool, so you're, you're the US UI designer. Um, and it looks like it is a sole designer, like you were uh, doing this yourself over a short period of time. So I'm guessing this is a conceptual project ending in, okay, so uh, two rounds of user testing of hi-fi prototypes. Okay, 
Cool, that's really good to know. And I think because uh, you mentioned um, for a different project you, that was a, a theoretical or conceptual project, I think it's good to bring that um, into the description for this as well on your homepage if you haven't already. And one thing I would be interested to know is as for tools, I see two design tools. I would like to know that, like, what did you use differently for each one? What did you use Sketch for? Mm -hmm. What did you use Figma for? Mm -hmm. um, And also another thing would be um, lessons learned might actually be better um, suited for the end um, as, as one of the last sections. Um, Ooh, I'm gonna have to push back on that, Timothy. Really? I'm gonna challenge okay. that, yes, because one of my tips was, how would you summarize your entire case study at the top, right? So that's gonna include mm -hmm. um, your overview as well as like, you know, the, the spoiler mm -hmm. alert, the ending, like these are the key takeaways, right? So it's like, mm. this is what I did and then here's my key takeaways. And then like, those are the things I will remember the most. So I think it's totally fine to include mm -hmm. lessons learned as long as like you structurally like walk through, narratively walk through the rest of your case study. It's kind of like starting from the end and then like, let me then walk you through from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like uh, the part about the summary, like, if someone doesn't have the time to read through the entire thing, they're never going to get to some of the lessons that you learned as well. Um, okay, so this, uh, so we got the uh, description, we got uh, the spoiler alert area, and then first one is memory fail as a as a section header almost. Um, so I guess it's an introduction. So I'm assuming that this is introducing the kind of like the background of the case. Uh, <laughs> this is a really cool. During a cleaning of my bookshelves, I found four copies of Neuromancer by William Gibson. And uh, during collecting books, this cool edition covers like Dune or Lord of the Rings, but four the same, really. Okay. So this actually like illustrates the, um, the, the background in a more like personal and interesting manner and like more relatable versus like, um the background of this case is i did this for this like I, I think this adds a little bit more personality and relatability to it so i think this is really interesting yeah also my uh, like that you you break out break up the the text block so it's not like too intimidating mm -hmm. to like read through each block it's very nice to mm -hmm. to see it with like nice healthy space in between mm -hmm. so it's easy to read through mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of like personality to the writing, like a um, little bit of like sarcasm as well, uh, which is really good. Um, okay. And then the objective, uh, the objective of uh, finalists help record collectors catalog their records plus records they want to own or own later, helps users find and add albums to current collection or wish list. So uh, both very, very clear. Um, I think in the interest of time, I'll probably skim through it because it is a relatively uh, lengthy case. Yep, and then you have yeah. uh, a minute or two before you pick your next oh. one. Oh, okay, cool, gotcha. Um, okay, so we got competitors, user research. So one thing that um, Ying had mentioned in, I believe in one of her tips was about like how you use uh, images. So like for something like this, uh, when using like larger, like. Uh, images of uh, process work, consider um, how someone would look at it on mobile device. So this one probably won't scale too well. So how can you present the information here a little bit differently? Do you just include it in your content and so that it's uh, responsive and can easily be read if someone needs to? Um, just something to consider. And then I like the emphasis of uh, the different sections. So like talking to record collectors, and then some of the key points, I like the emphasis of that because if someone is skimming through the portfolio, sorry, the case study, uh, you want like little bits of information for them as a takeaway. So I think this is a, a really good idea. Um, and then this, I'll probably add in like one other thought. So yeah, similar comment as to uh, what was there before, like if you're using JPEGs, consider like, do you want users to be, readers to be reading it? And if you do, uh, make sure that they're easily readable um, on different device sizes. So uh, everything else is uh, relatively structured the same way as as a um, as a usual um, case study. Um, so 
I find it interesting that you included logo and branding. Um, I I would debate if this is absolutely necessary when uh, you're communicating your ability to solve a problem for a user. So think about, is this something that I necessarily do need or is this like a nice to have that is an add-on to my case studies? And brevity, in my opinion, is a really important thing when it comes to case studies. So if there's anything that you're kind of like on defense about that would be great to show like in an interview setting but if you don't need to include it in a portfolio um just something to consider as well so i'll uh jump into the next one all right okay all right uh jump back to the links and i will get uh so this is this one is actually on Behance, thoughts uh, on trying something like that? Okay. Because there are quite a bit of uh, portfolios on Behance, like, um, so I don't think it would hurt to go over something like that as well. And I actually, I don't think we did, the last time we did something like this, we didn't look at any portfolios on, um, that's uh, not like their own site. Yeah, that's true. I'm always like when I when I see it's like hosted on Behance or like trip, Dribble, I do look at it with a little bit critical eye because I'm going to be seeing like how well can you format your case study within the way that this strike this site structures um, mm -hmm. their work. So mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. And so just taking a quick look at I think this is Val. Um, so. Looking at her work, so there is a there's a couple of filters for work, mood boards, and something called appreciation, which I'm not too certain uh, where it is. Um, and then tools used, okay. Um, and then there is a Steam mobile app redesign. There is a another project called Being Good, and then there are uh, some sections called brand and UX UI, social media, logo. So I would say I thought there's like typography and illustration. So my kind of like high, high level feedback would be um, what is the main objective of your portfolio? Kind of like if you have your own portfolio site, are you communicating like your uh, UX and UI skills? Are you communicating your illustration skills? Uh, what is the main focus? And make sure that it's uh, like brevity is key. So make sure whatever you show is very uh, focused so that um, it gives a clear picture uh, to an employer um, who you are. So if you do like a little bit of everything, but most companies that you apply to aren't really looking for that, then really like, what's well, the point? Um, it's good to like share it like in a different way, but uh, maybe like not directly in your portfolio. Yeah, um, another, another thing Val is like, I know on the left side where you have your profile, Behance does give you that space to to have like a short description. So I would love to see um, again mm -hmm. practicing like a concise, unique headline of like what makes mm -hmm. uh, like who you are, your your key skills, what value do you bring. Um, it's like another way for me to kind of check off like okay, I'm I'm interested in reading more about this person. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so I jump into I'll just pick the first one. Uh, Steam oh, mobile good. app. That was the one I wanted you to click on. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have another gamer here? Oh, guilty. Yeah. Okay. All right. Steam Mobile. So, uh, oh, this one is in Spanish, which will be a little bit tougher for, I guess, uh, I like myself. This. I like this. All okay. right. Let's do this. Okay. All right. Let's give it a shot. Um, yeah, okay. we want people to comment on the words themselves. At least I can. But <laughs> it's a great way for us to kind of yeah. focus on the, the layout. The formatting okay. of the content. Yeah, so we have um, something related to hardware. Uh, I'm guessing this is uh, something along the lines of, say, like reactions and notifications, is my initial guess. Yeah, like these uh, are the key things that they focused on. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a video here. Um, it would be good if you clarify, like, either in Spanish or English. Uh, whatever language you want to communicate in, just a little bit more beyond just the name, just so that uh, it's very clear as to like if someone's going to watch the video, what are they expecting to see? 
but video is actually that topic of uh, including video is actually really interesting. I've seen, uh, I've had some uh, mentees recently that have included video walkthroughs of uh, their work, and I think that's like an interesting like additional like personal touch to yeah. uh, presenting their work. I think so. If it's um, it's either like this is the release of their work or maybe a, a video that they created. It gives the the mm -hmm. audience more insight into like your thought mm -hmm. process or how you communicate. But yeah, plus yeah. one with Timothy of like just give a little like, hey, this is the video. This is what you're gonna see. This is what you're gonna expect. Mm -hmm. And as someone who admittedly is like lazy at times, I would much rather watch like um, a two minute video of you describing something than having to read for like five minutes to understand the concept. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a, actually a yeah. great idea, Timothy. So for yeah. those of y'all, like if you want to create a video version of your case study, then you can just send a link to that like two or three minute video to somebody yeah. and they could just watch that in addition to your yeah. case study, like multiple ways for people yeah. to engage with your 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 portfolio and your content. So there's an idea. And, if anything, and also that would potentially stand out amongst like employer, if they're looking at 10 portfolios and they're all equally really good, but one of them actually showed it like through video, like that automatically like stays in your mind. Okay, so I'll conclude. So just, overall, I think the layout and the design is pretty good, just in terms of looking at just like uh, color choices, hierarchy, uh, the way you lay out different sections. I think that's really good. Um, okay. Yeah, I like the way that they 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 group like key points. The, mm -hmm. the grouping hierarchy is very easy to follow. Mm -hmm. I would be interested to see uh, without. I don't think I've actually actually ever used the hands on mobile. I wonder how um, this would scale. Just something to consider as well. Okay. Um, guessing this one might be a some sort of heuristic evaluation. Yes. Or to my limited Spanish. Thank goodness for cognate words. <laughs> you can yeah. guess. Uh, okay. So this is it in regards to user reviews. So I'm assuming this is something that, so you took a look at um, real life user reviews to base your uh, like redesign on, I'm guessing, which is also really good. This is actually really good for like whoever is um, doing a like unsolicited unsolicited or conceptual redesign of something existing. Um, if if the app is if the scope of the app is like really huge, so take like say Uber Eats for example. Like there are like there's I think groceries now. There's like your regular food ordering. Um, take a look. Like a good way to go about it is instead of re trying to redesign the entire experience, um, focus on one area that you feel like. Uh, doesn't work really well. And if you can find reviews that kind of supplement your choice in the problem to solve, I think that would be really good as well. Yeah. So that um, a reader would know, hey, you're not making up the problem yourself. This is actually like identified through your um, additional research. Yes. And I, re I really love that they pulled like a screenshot of like, hey, I've done my research. Here's an artifact that I grabbed out there and, mm -hmm. and I included here so you can read it yourself. Um, instead of just saying like, I did market research or I did competitive analysis and this is what I find. Mm -hmm. like, actually, here's an artifact, right? Mm -hmm. That's forming the rest of my case study here. That's really great to see. Mm -hmm. All right, time so, check, we have like a minute or so and then it's my time and okay. it's my turn. All right, okay. So we've got some, um, I, I'm guessing they're personas. Uh, I believe this is more a user journey potentially, uh, okay. And then problems and opportunities. Okay, and then I believe this is a, like a matrix to evaluate um, a two, two potential directions and maybe like levels of impact potentially, which is it's also really good in terms of like assessing, like prioritizing yes. um, what you do. So there is a lot of process work in here. I'm just gonna, in the interest of time, I'm gonna quickly sort of skim through. So yeah, similar feedback as to the first case study if you're presenting like large pieces of, like large graphics, like consider how they would look on different screen sizes. If the detail is really minuscule, then is there really a point to presenting it to begin with? 
Um, or are you just trying to communicate like, hey, I want to show someone that I did something like this? Um, okay. And yeah, I think uh, I'll leave it at that. There's quite a bit. So something to consider kind of like that first case study, is there a, a way to like quickly summarize uh, what you're doing here so that if someone doesn't have say like 20 minutes to go through it, they don't have five, what's their takeaway? So, cause always, yeah, like I think it, this was something that you brought up in our first portfolio um, event was uh, treat this like a product. If you know that your user only has five minutes, how are you gonna make sure that they uh, they get what they would like to see? or they, they get to see what you would like to communicate to them within yeah. that limited period of time. So Val, this is like really great, like robust context. So I'm not saying like, don't delete this, right? Keep this, but then like practice, seeing if you can mm -hmm. streamline this or summarize this and have that version as well. If anyone, if, if the audience is, or the reader is interested in like looking at a particular section of your case study that you can directly link them to that section to give them that more insight. But I think mm -hmm. definitely in your introduction anywhere or when you talk about yourself is that like you're very, um, you're process driven. You you take the time and the dedication to like to figure out all of the like kind of the intangible stuff, right? The the, pro the process, the research and all that, that informs your design. That's really good to see. I want you to be able to highlight that when you talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so I'll stop sharing right there and gonna head off to Ying for the next few. All right. I'll, I'll start fresh. Do you, can everybody drop their link in the portfolio? And I'll pick one. Okay, Let's see this one from Elsa Marie. I'm gonna share my screen. And then Timothy, let me know when you can see it. Okay. Yep, I can see it. Whoa! Well, very definitely grabs my attention. This is very cool. Uh, let's see. So, hi, I'm Elsa, a UX UI designer. I'm Tanzanian designer with experience in architecture. Thank you. This is like really, really like clear, unique uh, hero tagline here. I understand like who you are, what your skills are, and then you tell me what your uh, your your strengths are what you focus are your focuses are in, so that's a nice mm -hmm. strong first impression. And I really like the um if, if you don't mind going back up, um the part where you mentioned like you enjoy conceptualizing bold creative and distinguishable designs for your clients. I think that automatically kind of gives um like you like a specialty of like certain types of clients that you're gonna be that you want to be working for. And this is much better than say like you're a designer who uh, cares about like user-friendly experiences. Like that's a little bit more dry. Whereas this is like, you're someone who's like willing to kind of push the boundaries and be bold and be creative. So this is really good. Yeah, so uh, Irem in the, I think Irem, Irem in the chat was saying this is a, another Webflow site. So like, this is wild. I'm gonna, Webflow was intimidating to me before because it seemed like kind of one of those overhaul type of activities, but this is very cool to see. So now I'm very intrigued. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, yeah. also bringing back the parallax, making it trendy mm -hmm. again. The uh, navigation is an interesting choice as well. I wonder um, how, I, without looking at it on, on mobile, uh, I wonder how that would work. But uh, this is also something that's let's, let's a, little bit, a little bit different. All right, still, still okay, works. So it's hidden. Yeah, still works. Yeah, cool. okay. All right, yeah. It's, um, it's different, definitely for sure, but it's not the different layout isn't hindering me. It's not preventing me from understanding it. It's just different. Okay, so- okay, uh, The one, one thing, thing I would, there's a little small thing uh, I would comment. Yeah, I don't know if it's because of screen sharing, but I do know that there's a little bit of pixelation maybe with the icons at the bottom, maybe just something to think Please? about. It might just be sharing. It might be the screen sharing that makes it look oh, a little okay. pixelated. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm not noticing. Okay. It. Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, one thing I'm noticing here, um, I, I, I do like seeing these strong uh, images here, but again, when you're, mm -hmm. imagine I'm on mobile, there's no hover interaction on mobile. So how will I know what this project is about without me having to click on it, you know? So I would I would recommend considering um, putting some text with these images, whether it's 
outside of this image or overlaid on top of the image somehow so it's clear. You know, tell me what this project is about. Uh, what was your contrib contribution? Any like any labels that might help me like decide which one to dive into? I think that would be a great a great way to utilize this format that you have here. I like this um, about me description too, uh, especially to ease out animation. <laughs> yeah, that one's really good. Um, and then, yeah, everything else is also like pretty clear, like beyond professional work. I love connecting with other creatives. About that. Yeah, like like the first yeah. this first paragraph here is definitely telling me like your focus is on UI, like UI, mm -hmm. motion, animation, color, typography, mm -hmm. getting that vibe. Yeah, and that kind of comes through just through the uh, layout choice in your website as well. Yeah. Um, because it's very clear that you um, intentionally built this like a little bit differently than what you would normally see in a portfolio. So what you communicate, like what you say, who you say you are, you follow through in, at least in the uh, design of your portfolio site. Yes. And so that's that one thing that's really important is uh, like there's, it's one thing to say like what your headline is, like who you are, how you work, what you're passionate about. It's another thing to like, if your case studies and the rest of your site actually like helps support it. So keep that in mind for just in general. Yeah, so overall I give a, I have a overall good understanding of who you are in and outside of work. Um, let's see, ooh, Adobe Live segment. This is great. I love that you've included yeah. your like um, community engagements on here. Um, you know, maybe I'm gonna play like a. Um, I'll let you explain. I'll let you introduce yourself, <laughs> but uh, please right. let us know like. What this is great. Yes, because this gives yeah. me a window into uh, how you how you talk, how you talk about yourself, your process, how you communicate. So if I was, it's like well, another one of those things where it's like it gives me greater insight into your overall thought process, communication, and how that would be a fit for my team if I was hiring. So it's like, oh, here she is like live talking about something she's very passionate about. And it's definitely mm -hmm. a great thing to see here. Yeah, on like a similar note, if you have like say video examples of um, you presenting like a particular piece of work, if it's like at a hackathon or if it's like through like a workshop that you decide to do, like don't be afraid to bring those into your portfolio. It gives like, more um, like more of a well-roundedness to um, your uh, your site. Yep, absolutely. And then I see testimonials. Mm -hmm. Let's see, this is great. Oh, you you pulled uh you kind of pulled from the is it the not review recommendations from LinkedIn, but this is really good to see here. Of like, hey, I know I'm awesome, and I'm telling you I'm awesome, and this is what I can do for you. But also, this is what other people have said about my work mm -hmm. and how I've contributed. So it lends mm -hmm. more credibility to your overall, um, your candidacy for like a role or for any type of like opportunity. Mm -hmm. Skills, good to know, and then contact. Okay, let's jump into case study. So in terms of time, we're, on, we're around 746 at the moment. Ooh, okay, yes. All right, let me go through this quick. I like that you just like, I did everything. <laughs> all right. Nice short summary of what this is all overall about. And then some context on people don't understand this uh, client, what last FM is. Nice, nicely organized content. Um, just in case. I'll see if, if you can see if you can enlarge any images here because I have, let's see. I don't have an issue like looking from this, but I imagine if someone else had like diff, have like vision difficulties or, or we're looking at it from further away, it might be harder to read this smaller text here. Yes, see if you can, ooh. Okay, good. But see if you can enlarge it on the page so it doesn't take me into a different tab. Okay, I like, um, so I've seen some crazy like process flow like diagrams. So I appreciate you kind of like, here's this specific 
of flow diagram. And it's easier for me to kind of like start from the beginning and then go through. Um, that's, so that's my recommendation. If you have like a very like chaotic or very dense process flow map, just pick a few to highlight on your case study. You don't need to show everything. Just like pick what are the two or three important parts I want to be able to highlight and showcase. See if you can, uh, it'd be nice to enlarge this. Okay, so you went from wireframes and wire flows to, to color palette. I would have liked to see like another iteration on your designs because it went from, I'd like to see like how you iterated on the, on the low to high fidelity. Like what changes did you make? Like what insights did you uncover? Why did you make that decision to, to focus on this or the other? Awesome, you definitely have strong visual design shops. Yeah. Whoa, dark, oh, dark matter. Okay, very immersive. So yeah, your reflection. So see if you can pull some of your like takeaways or reflections at the beginning too. So it kind of creates this like short little story before diving into the details. Another thing is, um, is see if you can, your, your uh, process section here in, incorporates like 90% of the case studies. So see if you can actually kind of break that out even further. So person could be like, oh, I don't need to work. If they want to look more at the research than the designs or vice versa, then they can just click on that and like jump there, jump there because you have a pretty robust case study here mm -hmm. overall and yeah, also, uh, yeah. um i was gonna i was thinking because uh sfm is a relatively large app if um if you want to even maybe like break up the redesign into like a few like smaller cases that's something Ooh. that you can consider if you want to do kind of like a more pocket-sized like version of uh portfolios as like an experiment to see uh, if more people are, are reading it all the way through. Um, and then the other thing is, um, I believe uh, it was framed as like, in the beginning, it was like this app, this, this, and then I'm going through the exercises to improve it. But if you can frame it in a more um, user focused way. So like um, Ying, for example, uses less of them to do this. And as I was going through the evaluation, I found that like these were the issues for a user like, like her. And then this is how I gone about solving the problems just to give it like a more uh, personal lens to the case study might be something that uh, you can try out as well. Yep. Great last point. Yeah, very great job on like the presentation aspect. Mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely like the uh, what I'm seeing is like really great content and plus one to Timothy of like you have enough here to break this into like really focused uh, smaller case studies right and then you can depending on the opportunity or the core objective, you can like pick from that focused case study and then share that with the other person as well. So mm -hmm. it's like great, like huge okay. case study to like to be able to pick apart from. Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, uh, okay, sorry. No, nope. uh, lost it. One, one quick, any time for one quick last point? Yeah, do it. Okay, so uh, when it comes to um, uh, mobile redesign, um, I noticed that there may be some parts of your redesign that may not be following um, standard um, like Android or iOS conventions. So if you are breaking like certain conventions, be ready to explain why when you present it mm -hmm. in a interview setting as well. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was it. it it's, yeah, it gives you, um, you're practicing communicating your design rationale. And that rationale mm -hmm. can be just like, I wanted to. Uh, focus on a visual design that's not without the constraint of like iOS or mm -hmm. Android uh, design mm -hmm. interface guidelines. And that's perfectly, mm -hmm. perfectly okay. Um, but yeah, it's good to be able to, to know, understand the rationale why you make that decision or that action that you took. Okay, uh, go in the chat again. Let's do... Yeah. 
Do you see my new tab or is it just one tab? Mm -hmm. Okay, Kira. Yeah. Nice to meet you too, Kira. Mm -hmm. Product designer who strikes for designing product learnable, memorable, delightful. Previously, I worked in marketing where I translated marketing insights into design. Okay, so yes, yeah, so when you when you ever bring up um, like a, a previous job experience or you're transferring from a different industry, it's good to like call out how those skills were transferable, right? Um, I talk to mentors where it's like, well, I, I came from healthcare or I came from teaching and I'm not sure. I feel like I'm kind of starting from, from step zero. And that's definitely not the case. There's, I feel like any industry that you transition to UX from, there's always overlap of skills um, that you can talk about, right? And it's good, it's good practice to say like, hey, I am a product designer with a strong background in marketing and graphic design because I do X, Y, and Z, and that informs my overall like product design process, right? You wanna be able to expand about like why um, this additional experience or perspective that you have, it adds value to the team, to the project that you work on. I'd be interested to see um, if you, what happens if you click on view my work because yeah, I see the work below and then there's also oh. a link at the top. I don't think you need this, Kira. <laughs> It's already right here. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, wait, does this take me somewhere else from here? But I'm already here, so maybe not needed. Uh, okay, let's see. Design. So I would want to, you have enough space here to kind of expand more in your description. You have, you have four case studies, right? So remember, pretend I only have time to like look at one. How will you make this easy for me to choose which one to look into, right? So you want to be clear about, this is this is the project. Uh, this is what you're gonna expect on it. These are my like key contributions. Um, this was either research heavy or uh, prototyping heavy or brand design heavy. Mm -hmm. Let's me know like okay, I want to look at this one over this one because I only have a short amount of time. Um, and then also, okay. if um, one is say like a, a conceptual project and one is uh, released, yeah. um, some employees may want to see like what is actually shipped versus that. Uh, Concept. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna click on this one. Well fit app. So entice me with the big hero image. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is great. Great job, Kira. I like this nice contained overview of what you did here, your role, not just like your role, but like what you did in that role. Mm -hmm. So um Okay, so yeah, the team size is three, and then you're in charge of design and research. It'd be interesting to know what the uh, other members of the team were um, uh, in charge of. So that question might come up uh, during your interview, potentially. That's true. Just say like, it, you don't have yeah. to say their, share their name, but like, hey, I worked within a team. These were our roles. And this is always something I'm kind of looking for when I'm looking at a case study that's a, that you're collaborating with others on, like other partners. How did that impact your case study, right? You're not the only one making decisions, sharing insights. There must have been some back and forth about decision making. I would love to, to read more about and understand more about that because odds are most of us are going to be working in a team. So it's good to kind of see uh, some insight into how you collaborated, how you resolve conflict, how you prioritize what actions. Um, that's always great to see. Shows your collaboration experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a little bit of research um, according to CDC, more than a third of US adults have obesity. Yeah, given, you should, uh, okay. nice to link, link to that study too. Yeah, or like maybe even um, just emphasize that uh, particular uh, phrase yes. in, within just the paragraph. Bold that. Yeah. Overall, yeah, and I mean, I would also just... taking the color consistency across the, the text mm -hmm. and the illustrations. Yeah. And then just one small thing I would just uh, do a little bit of proofreading. I just saw like a spelling mistake that they're up. But yeah. um, oh, you it, it's, uh, <laughs> more people are mindful, I think. So it's a good practice to just like share with a friend to um, to oh, just have them wow. read it and see if they catch anything. Because like once you've worked on something for so long that like you, everything begins to like blur in your mind and um, it's good to get like another set of eyes to read through. Research. I do that. 
I've done that a million. I've made like spelling mistakes and all, missing words and all the time in work emails and Slack messages. So uh, yes. yeah, I'm always guilty of that. No, you can, so a tool you can use is and grammar, Grammarly is really popular. Always yep. like pick finds any mm -hmm. typos as well as like suggestions. Yeah, to grammar. Like, switch it up. And then we had a, I see in the chat, Yerem had said, take a look at the line height and the headings. I, I would agree mm -hmm. with that and see if like maybe shortening the height between these two. I will leave that up to you. It is easy to read though. So, mm -hmm. um, statement. I want me motivate. Okay. Ooh, yes. Thank you for telling me the scope and the constraints that you work within. Oh, this is really yes. important. Yeah, yes. user adoption yes. metrics and user uh, retention metrics. So, just kind of ties back to uh, what I was talking about earlier in terms of business goals. So this is actually like really important to consider as well. Yeah. Absolutely. In addition to just the user goal. Yes. Not so not just like when you um have these metrics or those research insights, always tie your next steps, like the iterations, the signing, the wireframing back to the problem or the core objective that you're trying to address. Like make it easy for me to be like. To, to communicate to me, like I made this design decision to address this user need or to address this problem. Mm -hmm. Market research. I'm glad you expanded on the details of the user interviews. That's always something I'm looking mm -hmm. for. Too often I see a case study, it'll just, it would just be a short section that's like, I conducted user interviews with four people and then it just moves on from there. And that yeah. to me is like, I, I don't know anything <laughs> about what was the context, what were the constraints, what were the goals of the user interviews? I want to know just what one, uh, one text message. <laughs> hey, did you yeah. do this? <laughs> there you go. Just kidding. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually like the illustration side to this. Uh, it adds oh. a little bit more personality to the personas instead of uh, like stock um uh user photos yeah Kara may hire you for like illustrations in the future this is bomb and i like that um for the different participants these are kind of like personas right that it's very like focused on these are the core uh identities or demographics about them that relate to the that relate to the the overall case study here mm -hmm. like it's, it's nice to have a very robust comprehensive persona but also good to be able to like, what's the core piece of the persona context that, that is most relevant here? Mm -hmm. I would say um, for conceptual projects, sometimes it may help if you're focusing on one particular persona just to kind of help with the scope of your project as well, but you've done the entire thing. So if you're creating more conceptual projects, maybe just think about like, if there's like keeping the scope of like what you're doing uh, a little bit smaller just to make the whole process like uh, leaner and faster and easier to do. Nice. Thank you for having the option to yeah. enlarge images. Yes. Also, thank you for not just having like wireframes, like screen side by side, but like adding some context of like, you have to interact with this to go here and in including mm -hmm. labels. I think it's kind of lazy when you just have like wireframes side by side with no context, no labels, no like annotation notes. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's, it's difficult for me to kind of see how you, how you address the user need in the designs. If you don't make, again, walk me through it and I don't have the context in it and point out like, Hey, this is the focus. Uh, this is the design edition mm -hmm. I made and it's seen here on this screen. This is very helpful. Mm -hmm. So again, we're at around 801 right now. I think we can yes. maybe I think give a look. Yeah, we'll give uh, another we'll minute more. so I can wrap up, but y'all feel free mm -hmm. to stick around for a bit while we wrap up, or if you need to drop off, get some mm -hmm. sleep. If it's 2 a.m. where you are, absolutely <laughs> won't hurt our feelings. I just want to make yeah. sure we, we can wrap this up with Kira before we end the event. Mm -hmm. Key findings. Okay. I like this. I like, so these are the yeah. annotations I want to see. This is like what you did. Mm -hmm. Nice might take this idea for some of the work that I'm doing. Very helpful. <laughs> and I like the emphasis with the different um, key, I think it was the uh, insights earlier, like they were all like highlighted in green. So it's a little bit easier to point out. Yeah, like you, you've used this green, not only in your design, but also in your case study too. So it's very easy 
for me to kind of like tie points together or help me mm -hmm. like follow along very I, I really I clearly see the intention behind it and it's serving you well mm -hmm. And I think yes, the fact sir. that um, your website is just naturally is mainly black and white, that is like a more flexible platform for whatever project you're doing. And all the visuals will generally work with neutral colors uh, versus like if your portfolio is very like one particular color, like green or red or like whatever color you choose. And then your your work is like very different visually then it, it might be a little bit of a visual clash potentially. Just yeah. something to also like think about like how do how well does your your work that you're presenting fit into like the look of your site Good. as a whole. I love I love the reflection that you have here. You mm -hmm. might be you might want to consider you know pulling some of these points into your into the top of their case study page here, you know, like a full uh, summary. And then you kind of walk it down. But I, I like this of like this is the main challenge that I ran into. And then mm -hmm. what I learned. Ooh, what I would do differently. Yes, this is great. I love this. Cool. One more thing that would make this the end of this like case study even awesome is um, one of my tips is uh, minimize dead ends. And what I mean by dead ends is like when you when the reader reaches the end of any page of your site, see, if, encourage, direct them into other portions of your site right here. So if you're if I'm done reading this case study, you can have another section down here that's like, hey, if you want to see Another example of how I tackled uh, like a mind, like a mindfulness or a healthcare related project, click here. Or hey, if you want to see how I tackle, how I uh, approach the research methodology differently with some interesting results, click here, right? Like drive the audience to different parts of your site. And you can do the same thing in your um, about page too, where like your about page is like where you kind of expand on like who you are, what makes you different. Um, this is also a great place for you to say like, hey, I, I'm really passionate about research. And if you don't believe me, click here because I apply different research methodologies on this particular site. So there's multiple areas in your portfolio where you can practice driving um, the audience to. So it's never, it's always like a, like a loop. So it gets them continuously engaged. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's awesome. Overall, great job, Kira. Mm -hmm. Great job, everybody, on your work great so far. Job. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for sharing your time. I know it's very valuable, especially if it's late for y'all. We really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, um, if, if this was really helpful for you, uh, please let us know however you can. Share your insights on, on social media or leave us any reviews. I don't know how you really leave, leave reviews with us, but uh, I think Timothy and I are, always have fun when we do this. So we may uh, do mm -hmm. this in the future. Uh, as well. So for, for mm -hmm. now, thank you so much wherever you are. Be happy, be mm -hmm. safe, and we will see you next time. Yeah. And if anybody wants kind of a more just general like mentoring or like feedback on your portfolios, feel free to book some time with us on uh, ADP list as well. Yes. Check us on ADP list. All right. Everybody have an okay. awesome rest of your day. Bye. Thank you, everyone.